thanks for for having me here today. Uh, I'm from Houston, Texas, and uh, mainly we do uh, cars, motorcycles. But Rob, we do. Some, I'm into arcade myself, vintage arcade, and uh, I do some pinballs also. But uh, Rob had asked me to come to it. I said I'd do anything for this guy. You know, he's the best. So uh, I was lucky enough to have him at my house. He was down watching a. Um, we were watching a. He took me to a, a Texans game against the Browns. The bad part was I don't care for the Texans, but the Texans beat the Browns. But anyway, we all we had a great time. Him, my wife, and we just had a great time in the sun. So he taught me into coming up here. Anyway, starting off, I've been in uh, business for almost 40 years. Been in Houston, Texas. I advertise in 45 national magazines. Um, car magazines, uh, like I say, arcade, everything. Um, the most important thing with a chrome shop, uh, you know, that, that people want to know about is fair prices is naturally one of the top. But turnaround time, that's the key to everything nowadays, turnaround time. If you uh, was to test the top five platers in the nation, which I'm in that top five, uh, the average turnaround time is around six months to get something back, which is ridiculous. Uh, I started out in the business 40 years ago, and we did five-day service, and it was uh, 7, 10. Now I'm at 15 days. So you can get it from me in 15 working days, three weeks, or you can wait the six months. It's, you know, whatever. So that's why we do stay very busy. People ask me, why does it take people six months to do something? I, I, I don't know how people stay in business. We work a lot of overtime. We might, when we're real busy getting for SEMA or something like that, you know, we work 12, 12, 15, 20 hours a day sometimes to get all that work out. So anyway, we don't guarantee it, but I would say 98% of our jobs are out in 15 working days or less. If you was to send me one item such as something like this, I would probably get you out in about five days because naturally service is everything nowadays. We, ha we actually offer a 10-day rush, a 5-day rush, and a 2-day rush. So if you needed something in a hurry and you're building, uh, uh, Jesse James is building a motorcycle, I do his chrome, and he says, I'm missing the master cylinder. I got a $40,000 motorcycle sold. Would be worth paying the little extra for the rush to get that master cylinder done. So anyway, like I say, turnaround time is the key to everything. Uh, next would be is losing detail. If you've got a uh, part that goes on a arcade machine that's got a lion's head, you don't want to buff that all down because now you've lost the detail to the lion's head. So guys on cars and arcade and all, uh, it means a lot to them, not losing the detail of the chrome. So you want to make sure your polishers don't bear down on all the, the sharp edges. We do everything except we don't do wheels, we don't do plastic, and we don't do firearms. Everything else we do. Very few people do pop metal nowadays. Pop metal is uh, very hard to do. You have to have cyanide copper, which I do, and I specialize in pop metal. It's 50% extra because when we're doing a piece of steel, it's called triple show chrome if you hear people. Nowadays, it's just nickel chrome. So anything you get from, say, a set of pinball legs, that's just going to be nickel chrome. And they're not polished. They're not a mere mirror finish now that uh, when you do uh, pot metal it's going to be five layers of plating uh, the acid copper goes on to fill the pitting so that's an extra 50 percent but what it does and no matter how bad it is I can make it perfect when we're done uh, back to the legs you can buy a pinball leg for about let's say they're 15 dollars each now what does it cost to chrome them at my shop a hundred and fifty dollars a leg and you go well, how could you spend that no, got guys that do it, guys that want stuff first class. Well, you know, the pinball legs I see that are chromed, I mean, that they look better. They look sandblasted with clear paint on them, look better than that chrome job. But again, that, that that's me now. So not everybody wants to spend 600 bucks on a set of pinball legs. But I got guys that send them in and do them in gold. That's double the price. So now we're at $1,200 for a set of gold, 24 karat gold pinball legs. People, people do it. Everybody's on a different budget, so everybody likes different stuff, you know. So the quality of, uh, of what I do is much higher than you would get on a pinball leg. But not everybody here is just a pinball. You probably are into cars, motorcycles, jukeboxes, slot machines, uh, barber chairs, 
uh, pedal cars, uh, you know, bicycles, whatever. And we do all that kind of stuff. Um, when somebody brings a job in, us, we photograph everything. So how do you not lose something? So if you brought me in 100 items, the very first thing is a man opens it up, we lay it on a white board, and then we're going to photograph. Now, we don't photograph each piece, but whatever would fit on half of this table would be one photo. Whatever fits another one, another photo. And then after it goes through the shop, we check it off as it goes through. That way we know we've lost something, if we have lost something, but very few shops go through that much work to cross it off. Then at the end, it's checked off for quality, check off everything. If it's not correct, we circle the one, run that back through, and then we still have you out in the uh, 15 working days or less. Uh, everybody always asks the most uh, interesting part of the plating business is how does it work? Well, when a part comes in, it's, we'll just say we had a uh, pinball leg and it's been sitting up since the 60s. It's all rusted and looks bad. What we're going to do is we're going to wire that pinball leg up to a hook like this. On that hook would, uh, would be the wire here, and then we have the pinball leg. It has to make a connection. This is going to hang on a uh, uh, rectifier rod, and you turn it up to about 8 volts at maybe uh, 50 uh, amps. No, three amps on that. And what it's going to do is eventually it's going to eat, just eat it all the way down to there's nothing but bare metal. So now you have a bare metal leg. That's step one. After it leaves that, it's going to go over to the polishing department. Now in the polishing department, that's the key to the business pretty much. Polishing is super, super hard. So the guy's going to see that in the polishing department. And what he's going to do is take what we call a sewn buff right here. And he's going to put a compound on that. And... This is on a machine, so the machine's turning. You don't put the machine on the part. We have to pick up the part and put it to the machine. So it weighs 300 pounds. He's going to be able to pick up 300 pounds. So this is step one. He's going to go through and get it fairly smooth, not perfectly smooth, but it only goes so far, and he's going to use a compound. We have different color compounds. So say, for example, on the, on the first run, we're, we're going to use the black with this. So the, the machine was turning right now. He would put this up to the wheel as it turns. It burns it on there. Then he'd take the part and keep working it. Put a little bit of this on there again and keep working it with this wheel. After he's done with that wheel, we're going to go next to the sisal wheel. It's like a piece of hay made in hay. We're going to go to another compound of white. He's going to do the same thing again. He's going to hold this part up to the wheel, hold it like that, into the wheel, very dangerous, and rub it onto this right here as this is turning. So... Then he's going to get it even smoother to, to step two. And then, and that would take, you know, uh, maybe 20 minutes to get this that smooth. Then we're going to go into the third step. That's going to be this sewn one here. It's cloth, but this is rough, a little bit finer, a little bit finer. Then he's going to put another compound on it. He's going to go it up to, to this wheel right here, the sewn buff, and uh, go to another compound. And then it just starts to get shinier and shinier now when we get to the last step this is a very very fine cloth and he's going to put a white on that also and come up and he's going to buff that when we get done with the metal that that uh leg on that pinball it needs to be this shiny before we played it people think just oh get it fairly smooth oh no it's got to be super super shiny and you go, well, why wouldn't you just leave it like that? Because if you touched it, it would rust. So you have to put something on it fairly quick. So we're going to get it to this smoothness right here. Then it goes over into the plating department. The plating department, that guy is going to put electricity to this, clean, the, clean it with soap. It's going to have uh, getting in all the, uh, the little pits and stuff like that. It's going to scrub it with a brush. Then he's going to soak it into a tank at 130 degrees for about three to five minutes this is that piece and after it comes out of that he's going to brush it with a brush rinse it three different times one's got a little bit of an acid rinse another little acid and then just a regular rinse now we're ready to start plating remember now if this was a bolt we still had to go through all these same steps so when you see that a, a bolt costs three dollars if you had to do the bolt, you would say it's worth $20 because it's a lot of work. If a guy comes to me and says, how much are bolts or three? How about if I have 500 of them? It's $5 a bolt because I, I can't make a living doing bolts. You're just doing it 
part of the business, but very, that's a lot of work. You'll see all these steps, we're not, we're not even halfway through. So now after it goes into the soap, he cleans, he's going to put it into the nickel tank. It really should be called the nickel plating business, not the chrome plating business. And I'll tell you why. On something that's made out of brass like this, it could go directly to the nickel. He's going to put that down into the nickel, leave it in there for this would probably be in there about 30 minutes. And then after it comes out of the nickel, we're going to inspect it, rinse it, make sure it's right. Then it goes into the chrome tank. And you ready for this? It's going to be in the chrome tank for approximately 15 seconds. So, and after that nickel, if you want 24 karat gold, we could go into that. Or we can go into the chrome. There's no way chrome could ever peel on anything you've ever owned. The nickel could peel. That's what you're thinking is the chrome, but it's really not the chrome. The chrome is, uh, to exaggerate, the, the chrome is this thick, the nickel's this thick. So you have to have the nickel for the chrome, something to stick. Chrome will not stick to anything except nickel. So you have to have that nickel base down first, no matter what. Now, on most items, unless it's brass, it's going to go from the soap over to the cyanide copper. Cyanide copper, you can't buy anymore. It's just like being a drug dealer, basically. I'm grandfathered in because I've been there for almost 40 years. So then we're going to put cyanide copper on a pinball leg. Then we're going to put in that nickel, and then we're going to put it in the chrome, and then we're done. So how long would it take to do a pinball leg to strip it? Just to take the old chrome off or rust off, that's going to be at least 30 to 45 minutes. Then we got to go over and uh, clean the part, rinse it, and get it all ready for the uh, polisher. So then he's going to polish it. That pinball leg's probably going to take to polish that uh, at least another hour. Then it's got to be cleaned again, like we said, go in the soap, and it's got to be plated for at least another hour. So now that pinball leg, for one pinball leg, we got at least, at least three hours invested in it. So that $15 leg you can buy here versus a $150 leg, I'm going to redo it for you, it's three hours in it. Well, I'd go broke if that's all I but remember, I'm going to put a lot of stuff in that tank at one time. So you can't just put one pinball leg. You'd have to put a lot of them in there to, to be able to make them. The, the tanks are 1,000 gallons each, most of them. And a nickel tank is about 50 or 60,000 bucks. So the, the chrome tank's not used much, as I said, because that pinball leg's only going to be in there 30 seconds at the most in, that, in the tank. So it sits idle a lot of the time. And when you look at any of these tanks, such as the nickel, it looks like, uh, it looks like uh, green Kool-Aid. It's basically what it looks like. Nickel does. So it's bubbling at about 130 degrees, and it's bubbling. All the time, you sit it in there, bring it out in 30 minutes, but it doesn't look shiny like most people think. You dip it in, it comes out shiny. Not at all. That's not it at all. I know it, you would think that, but it, but it isn't. It's just a green uh, Kool-Aid that goes in when it comes out. That's when you get your nickel. The chrome is uh, a real dark goldish, uh, goldish black, and then it stain your hands real, real bad. The nickel uh, uh, more, is a little prettier. So uh, that chrome will last you, that, it usually lasts about six to seven years in that, in that tank because you don't ever use it, much of it. The nickel, you're putting in nickel all the time, and nickel is very expensive. And on that nickel tank, uh, you think, well, how is the green Kool-Aid look? That's the liquid, but in the side of the tank, there's baskets about that big with these little pellets about the size of a quarter. And those are nickel pellets. They fit down in these bags that sit on the side, all the way down the side. So when you run the electricity through it, it pulls it out of those bags and it puts it onto the part. You can't see it with your eyes. It just does it. But you can't actually watch it do it. So, But it is a very, very interesting business. Now, if you decided, you say, well, I don't want uh, chrome. I want 24 karat gold. I'll pass this around in a minute. So there's the 24 karat gold. And uh, it's a much smaller tank because I couldn't afford a 1,000 gallon 24 karat gold. But it's a small tank, but we don't do a whole lot of big. Guys like don't do bumpers on cars and gold. We mainly do uh, Cadillac emblems or ramps on a pinball. Guys, do some of those ramps were gold and stuff like that. So you do that in the gold. But So your, 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 your line is, is nickel, 
cyanide copper first on stuff except brass. Cyanide copper, nickel, and then gold or nickel and chrome, whichever whichever way you would like it. Now, that's why it's normally cyanide copper, nickel, chrome, because car guys and motorcycle guys, that that's what they put on their on their vehicles and their and their cars. Now, the polishing job, which is the hardest, the guys in the back. So if they have a bumper, the one man's holding that bumper up, heavy bumper, trying to polish it to look like this before he even plates it. He's got to be a very talented guy, and it's a very dangerous job because th this wheel is turning real fast. If he puts it up to it and it catches, it's all over. The bumper's wasted, and he's hurt real bad. So it's a very, very dangerous business to be in, super dangerous. And uh, uh, price-wise, people say, well, do you go by the pound? Do you go by, how do you price? Configuration of the part is the key. So a straight leg on a pinball, I could actually, that's pretty easy. A horn ring on a car, I wouldn't do it for 5,000, me personally, but my guys can. Because anything that's a circle uh, inside here or something, there, there's no way I could do that. So it's very dangerous because the wheel gets caught. It, uh, I've had a guy uh, lose his complete hand at my shop before. And uh, so they put pins back in. He came back to work six months later and uh, worked for me. So uh, what we also do, I have these custom made. This is sandpaper wheels. And they'll put a, a, usually about 25 of these are about like that at an angle. And when they flip, we can get down in a groove. Say we got to get in that corner. Well, this is too wide. This all stuff's about a half inch or wider. We can get that sandpaper down in that little groove to make the job come out a whole lot nicer. And uh, everything costs money in the business, but, you know, we're, we're trying to do the best job we possibly can and uh, make the customer happy. We don't require any deposit, only shops in the nation. Everybody's 50% down. We don't get anything down. So every now and then I get stuck with uh, uh, sometimes some pretty wild stuff because, we, we, again, don't get a deposit on anything. Never believed in it when I started, and I still, I'm never going to change, even though I, I do get burned sometimes. Maybe my guy might have gotten a car accident, and I got his stuff. He lives in Michigan, and you, know, you, you don't need it anymore. His wife says he's not with us any longer or something. But So I do have a lot of extra stuff, all kinds of stuff. Um, if you live in, uh, it's funny, the big cities more apt to have a plating place than a small cities. Very few small cities have a plating shop. We'll go to Cleveland, for example. There's, may, I think there's one place in Cleveland, but if you live in a small town or something, like, you know, your place, there, there, there's no plating shops anymore. Again, there's a, every day, I, I, I've, bought in, I've bought in two shops in the last year, pe big time people, but they're going out of business. I don't really buy their business. I just buy their website and their phone number. Because they've been building Paul's Chrome Plating has been in Pennsylvania for longer than I've been in business. Does good work. Can't find no employees. So he said, hey, I'm going to shut it down. No problem. I'll, I'll take the website. So now if you go to his website, it takes you directly to me. So that, that always helps. Uh, every time I've ever done one of these, I do a lot of uh, car meets again. And the, the, the thing everybody likes the most is questions and answers. Because everybody's got a question about when it comes to plating. Hey, man, well, you got it. Uh, I mean, I'm up for answers. So anything that I think of more, I'll tell you, but I'm usually time-wise, it's always people got a bunch of questions. So if you have any questions, let me know. If you don't, then it'd be the first time in my life I've ever been to a place that nobody's got a question. Yo. Do you do you uh, do you have a minimum? Yeah, I sure do. Hundred dollars is the minimum. Now, say for example, you sent me uh, one bolt. It's a hundred bucks. I, you know, I really wouldn't do that to you, but I'm just saying three bucks. I would three bolts. I would because they're three dollars each. You might as well send a hundred dollars worth. But it's not worth my time to mess with anything for under a hundred dollars. It's really not. Yeah, sure, that makes sense. Um, the other question I have is so in relation to pinball. Um, some things I've heard, um, hey, we're nickel plating X, Y, Z. We're going to nickel plate some play field brackets. Okay. okay. W what does that mean? I mean, does that mean they're just leaving it in nickel? Does that mean that they're chroming it? They left the last step off. Okay. And it's a great question because I'm going to tell you right now, 
I own a, a lot of plated stuff in my house, so my wife has to do the cleaning. When you leave that chrome step off, I highly recommend not doing it. The difference in nickel and chrome, when I show you the difference, there's not much difference. The nickel looks older and it's got a yellow tint to it, so stuff before the 40s, and the chrome's got more of a little bit of a blue tint, but you got to clean it now. So now somebody's got to clean it every, uh, if it's in your house, eh, maybe once a year, twice a year. But if you had a jukebox or something, a Whirlix or 10, 15, when you're cleaning that, that nickel, now the polish from the chrome when you're cleaning it gets between the wood and that. So now what are you going to get? A, you're going to get a Q-tip and clean all the, it, 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 it's a hassle. Every time I do something nickel for my personal collection, I always tell myself, God, I'll never do that again. It, I like the looks of it. But I don't like taking care of it. And nickel is not made to go outdoors. So on a car, never nickel or a motorcycle. If they do, no warranty. You guys, well, I never drove. No problem. Just I'm leaving off the last step, so I'm not going. It's going to be the same price. But don't don't ever let anybody talk about nickel and something. Yeah, the nickel to me looks more matte, and it's not certainly as shiny as the chrome. It's not quite as. Uh, uh, it's the same surface when we get done, so it doesn't look as shiny. Right. It really is the shiny. It's a little bit different color, though. And again, I'll show everybody this later, but there's the nickel, there's the chrome. There's some, but the average person, I have to actually sometimes, if I got I got to put something over the top to see down to see if it's from the shade point of is it nickel or gold. I can't even look at it right off and say, yep, I mean, I've been doing it forever. So it's hard to really tell the difference, but definitely go with the chrome. Do not go nickel. Okay, yeah, because I've looked up nickel platers before, and those uh, are very hard to find, whereas chrome is, is evidently the way to go. So. Yeah, and, and anybody that does chrome has to do nickel because right. chrome don't stick to anything. You have to do nickel. Okay. But it should be called the nickel plating business, not the chrome, to be honest with you. I mean, the chrome is nothing. Chrome is the easiest part of the whole, bi whole business. The chrome is hard as polishing it. Nice to see a fellow Texan, oh, too. That. Oh, why don't you go ahead? You're already covered. Yeah, find what you want. Yeah. So I was just curious how you got started in the business. Um, my father actually spent his whole career as an industrial plater, and you just don't come across many platers anymore. So did you get no. started in industry, in industrial plating? Well, or? Now, industrial is nowhere near the same as decorating, if you know that, right? Mm -hmm. Industrial is, there's no beauty to it. It's just durability. I'm in the beauty. It's a great question because I, I used to be a customer at, the, at my place. I was a customer. And he, I found out he was kind of getting burnt out on it, man. And I was chroming, you know, strength testers. And again, I'm an arcade guy, fortune tellers, uh, vending machines, uh, gumballs. Uh, I mean, I collect everything, still do. And... Finally, I, got, I did so much, sir. I also had a speed shop at the time. I had race car parts. I built race cars for my whole life. So I started to people bring chrome into my speed shop. I take it to him. He chromes it. And I did enough after a while. I just bought that business from the guy. And you can't get in the business. I don't care if you told me you got $5 million. You cannot, none of you can open up a chrome shop because the laws now are so tough. You, you couldn't afford it. I was grandfathered in. And they're still tough on me, believe me, man. It's very tough. I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, like I say, it's basically being a drug dealer pretty much. That cyanide, I could give it to anybody and kill you. I mean, it, it, you know, slip it in your drink and you, it, it's all over. So, uh, it, but anyway, that's how I got started. And I finally bought it from the guy and uh, the guy wanted to get out of the business. And man, since then now, my I've been there, like I say, almost 40 years. My son uh, graduated from Texas A&M and he's been there 10 years and he runs, you know, he probably runs 65% of it now. I run about 35, but I'm still there and I like it. I do all the pricing. I talk to all the customers, but, you know, we, we have about uh, 16 employees and uh, there's a lot of mom and pop places in, in my town, but they got two, three people work there. And again, you're lucky to get it back. They lose everything and uh, we don't do any swapping. A guy goes, hey, uh, I've got a 60, uh, 66 Corvette. I'm looking at a bumper. Can you swap me? No, I don't even want my name associated with. You get your original part back every single time, no matter what. I will not get into that. And on a 1 to 10, if I can't do a 9 or better, I don't do it. If a guy says, hey, I really don't need that good of a job. I'm selling the car. You might not want to use me then because it's going to look real good. I, you know, I, 
I'm, uh, again, I tell everybody, uh, Rob, no, I, I'm not cheap now, but I'm not, out, I'm not no ripoff. I'm at a fair price, but the quality's fabulous. The service is unbelievable. I mean, you can't have everything. You can't be cheap, good work, and have it out in one or two weeks. Huh? He, he called, hey, man, I need this. Craig, I need this back in three days or four days. Did I use it back? I get it back to him. I'll get it. While we're on that arcade theme, uh, do you get any people asking you to plate tokens? And is there anything special about that with all no, the I, detail? I've done a few. I don't do many, but at Christmas time, I usually 24 karat gold, 25 cents, and 50 cent dollar pieces give them out to friends. You have to make a little loop on it because there's no hole. You have to have a, a hole drilled in anything to plate it. But on something like that, you just kind of make the wire kind of tight. Leave a little tiny line there, but people think it's cool to get 24 karat gold coins at Christmas. I, I hand them out to people, you know. So is the issue disposable? disposal of the of the, is that is that the issue that that uh, the regulations that's the regulations that? i mean it's very real tough so i recirculate everything i use everything again and again but say for example chrome now the, well the worst in the whole business would be the cyanide copper that goes on the pop metal on the very first step you, you can't get rid of that but you don't need to because you use it and i just add to it add to it you never never really done there when we rinse it I use that same water and put it back in there so I never have to get rid of it. The chrome was the second worst thing. That every 10 years, I have to cut the bath in half and I have to pay to haul it off. It's a lot of money. And then my other question is, is so obviously you do gold. You, yep. you said you do brass. I don't do brass. I do gold instead. And you, people say, why? Well, if you did brass, you got to pay somebody to clear coat it. I don't have a permit there. I don't want to have a paint shop involved also. And it dulls it out. Now, Delta Faucets isn't, but Delta Faucets is a little bit bigger. They know what they're doing. But anybody that clear coats, you, you already know. If you put that in your bathroom at your house, and it was brass and you clear coated it, and a maid comes in and puts some comment on it, it's, it's ruined. Yeah. So gold is better, but it's richer. Now, it's double the price. But a faucet on a handle will say is uh, 40 bucks or something on a faucet. So now you're at 80 bucks. But you put carnauba wax on gold, looks good forever. And brass you, brass doesn't look quite as. You need on powder coat. I don't powder coat, no. Uh, quick follow-up question on the gold. Is there a durability difference or a treatment difference for a gold-plated part versus a chrome? Great, another great question. Yeah, gold is super, super soft. So no warranty at all except on peeling. But gold, if you put carnauba wax on it, you know, guys say, I'm putting these on my car. I don't ever take it out. That's all right. But you still got to put carnauba or something on there because what happens is if you've ever seen a guy's car, they try to gold plate some door handles on it, and they don't. And they keep using them, using them. It, it'll wear it off, and it, it'll be down to the nickel. It's not ruined, but it's down to the nickel. Now, you'd have to bring it back in and pay me the gold plate. It's really not made to put on something like that, but guys do it all the time. Now, the, the new style now is, and man, it's a headache, is remember I told you we do copper, and uh, I can copper it, polish the copper. To me, it's the best of anything looking, but it ain't going to hold up. They call it now, they call it rose gold. All it is is polished copper, but that's the new nickname, rose gold. A lot of guys do it. But I haven't found nothing clear coat that will hold up. There's a place, it's called Cerakote. They put on there and they say that'll hold up. But now you take it and go get it at Cerakote. That guy messes it up. You got to pay me to start out, do it over again. So you're taking a chance. So I, I wouldn't suggest the copper unless you leave it bare. It's in your house and you plan on cleaning it every every two months. Because it, it's a pain in the, you know what, take care of, man. It does look good. Oh, God, it looks good. It's very big hassle to take care of. Is there any way to treat a scratch in chrome, even if it's not? I mean, just like a temporary or a nope. makeshift, some fancy paint or something? Nothing. So if you have a scratch the size of a feather in there, there is no way to fix chrome. None. No matter what. you got to start completely over. 
Now you hear the gimmick on the internet. Please don't do this. Use some triple hot steel wool. Remember what we just talked about? The chrome is super, super thin. You can't tell the difference of chrome and nickel. So when you go out there and do that with a, a four aught, six, whatever it is, steel wool, you've taken the chrome off. And it looks good when you're looking at it, but two weeks later, it's worse than when you started. Don't ever use steel wool on chrome, ever. That's the worst. But you still, people do it. People come to me all the time. Yeah, I just got through doing these. And, oh, man. You, you, you got a big problem now. There, there is no fix no matter what. All you can use is chrome polish with a rag and do the best you can. Done. How much for a 64 Ford Galaxy 500 uh, front bumper? $1,395. Yeah, that's why that scratch isn't going to get fixed. There you go. It's been re yep. once. That's that's. Be enough. glad you don't have a 59 Cadillac. Front bumper yeah, yeah. is, is about 5000 Uh What about nickel plating at home? Well, you can try anything, but if you get caught, you're you know you're in trouble. So I wouldn't suggest it. Now those guys got little tanks, but I mean it, it's still illegal to have those any of those chemicals at your house. So I know people that do bolts, but it's still illegal because if you get caught with those, you're in trouble. So uh, you probably wouldn't get caught. You're right, but for three dollars, after you run through what I went through, it ain't the plating. That's the easy part. It's getting that bow door, which is the best polish machine. You're gonna buff each one of them bolts. I know you see you got if you got a whole lot more time than you got money, fine. But if you got more time than money, no, you gotta have a whole lot more time than money. <laughs> Craig, uh, I have a gentleman here. Uh, he's from Italy. His English is pretty good, and um, he came here to the show to meet you from Italy. Oh wow! Good. So he wanted to show you some of the work he's done. He, he speaks Italian a little bit. He'll just show you real quick. He wants to see if you can do something like this. But afterwards, he wants to show you what he did at his pinball machine on the show floor. So if you'll give him the uh, courtesy, oh, I'll do it. Absolutely. So Ivan, show him what you got there. I want to get your thoughts on what he's done here. Sure. Nickel. Nickel and painting. And painting? Yes. Yes. There's people that do that. No, you can do it anywhere. Just. Anytime you paint over it, now we're dealing with. You don't have a chrome job anymore. Now, now we. Right, but we're dealing with a paint job now. Because now you've got car paint, any kind of paint over nickel, it's just like your car. You can scratch it, it'll peel off, everything. So uh, I, I don't suggest ever doing that. But, but we have one machine in the arcade, one, one year that people pay it. I think it's good. It all right, they do wheels, they do everything like that. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it because uh, it, now you've got a painted item. So if you're in a, uh, say you go, go spill some lacquer thinner on that and see what happens. Spill some lacquer thinner on my bumper, soak it overnight, last the rest of your life. That, that when you paint, no, I know, I'm just giving you the durability. Question for you. Yes. Some of these guys that do these different colors, the um, with powder coating. Yeah, powder coating. You put your hands on there, and after a while, the, the, where, where your hands were sitting on the on the bar starts wearing off. Yeah, there you go. That's all we're saying. Durability. That right there, it's beautiful, but durability is not good. But yeah, they do. They do it in Houston, guys. Yeah, there you go. Yes, but I don't do it. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's only for show work. Yes, great. Looks good. Looks good. He may go to Mexico. Yeah. And it would probably hold up up there because there's nothing going to bother it. So it probably last you. A lot of guys are uh, doing bicycles like that now. Bicycles are really hot. So we chrome bicycles and then they put that uh, powder coat them in red, blue, green, what, whatever you want. And uh, 
uh, it goes like that. Don't ever try to powder coat anything uh, over chromo like he's saying for durability. It will not work. Guys on cars, that they end up coming back to me. It, it won't work no matter what. So you've got to strip them through me and then take them over to the powder coater after. I strip probably 30 wheels a week for people that want powder coated wheels because, again, you cannot apply powder coat or paint over chrome no matter what. You can do it. But there's no durability. My customers are all. They want durability for outdoors, cars, motorcycles, stuff like that. Now, when vehicles came from the factory years ago, they were uh, chromed, of course, and then anodized uh, over the chrome. No. Is my understanding. No. You cannot anodize chrome, no matter what. Anodize is for aluminum only. Well, so, I'm I'm, you're right. I'm confusing my materials. Yeah. Here. Say if you have a uh, a lot of Chevrolets, Fords, all all the trim around the window was aluminum, and it's they they factory polished it so so. Then they put clear anodizing, and it dulls it out. But if you're a person that wants original, that's what you should do. So they bring it to me. I strip the anodizing off because y'all can't get it off. And then we polish it to a mirror finish. Mirror not meaning as good as chrome because it's polished aluminum. Aluminum won't shine as good as steel. So anyway, we'll, we'll polish that. And then you can do, if your budget's not a go, you just take it and you keep it clean on your own, uh, say, your 64 Ford Falcon. And then if you want to do it originally, you would take that to a powder coater and clear it. If you want to go over the top, then you pay me to chrome the aluminum. But everybody's got a different look. You know, if you're a show car guy and you go to World of Wheels all over the United States, you're only going to win if it's chrome. I can tell that right now. All, all the big boys. But, the, yeah, you don't like that look. Yeah, you like original. And you can't bend it. It's not as flexible, too. When we chrome aluminum, then you, it's not as flexible. It, it stiffens it up. But if you're going to be a show car person or a show bike, you're only going to win. You're, you're not going to win with anything anodized. It's just too too dull. So I assume he was showing the the red. Is that what you were looking at? Was it? it was think, that? Was I think that he had blue, didn't you? Blue. Uh, was so, it blue. So, blue and red. Yeah. So. Any color you want it. So, educate me on what he's doing. I mean, so he's chroming it, and then he's, he's paying a guy like me to chrome it. And then is he? Is it a translucent clear coat? Is that what? It yeah. Is? Then it's just a clear. In Houston, I don't know about where he's at, but in Houston, Texas, they uh, they would powder coat it. You pick what color you want over the clear, and they can make it look uh, some pretty cool colors. Now, I mean, where sure. chrome's chrome's one color. It's chrome is chrome. But he, that guy doing that for him, you can make it any color you want. Yeah, yeah but you can you have a warm place where he after he clear. Right, it. but again. My style of customers don't want no, too much of that, sure. but it's, uh, it, right. Yeah. But they still got to chrome it for, you know, they got to go through us first. Anybody else? Yeah. I'm going to, uh, yeah, a couple things. If anybody wants to see the nickel and the gold, uh, here you go. And, uh, I uh, would like to give everybody a business card in case you ever need something. So uh, I'll pass everybody a card out. And if you've got any personal questions, you're more than welcome to come to me and ask me about those. And uh, whatever you need, Chrome, let me know. <laughs>